A new automated insulin pump called Twist has received FDA clearance, and it's the first to incorporate the algorithm Tidepool Loop. Tidepool Loop is an FDA cleared version of the popularly used DIY loop. Welcome to Diabetech. I'm Justin. I have type 1 diabetes. And on this show, I talk all things diabetes tech, news, and management with diabetes educators, tech leaders, and those thriving with diabetes. This is huge news. This is the first time an algorithm originating from the DIY space has made it to the mainstream. And Tidepool Loop has a lot to offer. It's the first system that allows carb input and bolusing right from an Apple Watch. It has one of the lowest target glucose ranges of 87 milligrams per deciliter. And it allows the user to program not just carbs, but the glycemic index, telling the app how long the food will take to absorb into the bloodstream, like pizza versus candy. This week, I'm re-airing an interview I had last summer with Howard Look, the founder and CEO of Tidepool. This is when the Tidepool Loop algorithm was cleared by the FDA for pumps. Now here we are with a pump. Howard and I get into how the app works, how it's used, where you'll get it, and how the algorithm got cleared using the DIY loop. I'm actively working to get someone on the show to tell us all about the new pump twist and how Tidepool Loop will integrate with it. If you're tuning in on YouTube, drop any questions you have in the comments so I can include them in the next interview. And if you're listening, head over to our website in the show notes to to send us feedback and sign up for our newsletter. Keep in mind that anything you hear on this podcast or content on any of my pages is not medical advice. Always consult with your physician before making changes to your healthcare. We mentioned the use of DIY Loop throughout this episode. DIY Loop is experimental and not approved by the FDA or regulatory authorities. You take full responsibility for building the and using it at your own risk. All right, let's get into it. Howard, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so excited to talk to you. Oh, it's so great to see you, Justin. Thanks for having me on. Of course. So the last time we spoke was a year and a half ago. At the time, I was still at CNET. I'm not there anymore. I was working on a story on DIY Loop, and you gave me some great insight on the We Are Not Waiting movement and Tidepool Loop. And since then, a lot has changed. You have received, or Tidepool Loop, that is, has received FDA clearance. And we're going to get into that today. But before we get into that clearance, can you first explain to my viewers what Tidepool Loop is? Absolutely. Well, first of all, Justin, let me say we are so, we in the diabetes tech community are so excited that you're doing this full time. Now you're an amazing representative for everything that's going on. So thank you for doing that. That's really, really wonderful news. So Tidepool Loop. So Uh, You know about DIY Loop, that's what we talked about a year and a half ago. The do-it-yourself version of Loop is an open source project that the community developed. And back in 2018, Tidepool decided to take on the Loop project and actually bring it to the FDA. So Tidepool Loop is Tidepool's version of Loop the open source do-it-yourself version of Loop, but it's a version that we made some enhancements to. For example, uh, we added a whole uh, section of onboarding to help people learn about using Loop. Um, We made some safety improvements and quality improvements, and we put the whole thing through our regulatory quality management system, and then we submitted it to the FDA using a process that's known as the 510K process which is how you get clearance for class two medical devices. So we submitted that to the FDA in December, 2020. And this past January, we we received what's called 510K clearance. And so Tidepool Loop is now an FDA cleared application, which is Tidepool's version of the Loop app. Yeah, and a lot of my viewers know that I am a DIY looper. I love the software so much, and I would love for it to be more accessible, which is why I'm so excited to be talking to you about Tidepool Loop, a FDA-cleared system uh, that is based off of that. I currently use the Dexcom G7 with the Omnipod Dash Pod. What are your goals when it comes to CGMs and pumps with Tidepool Loop? 
Yeah, that's a really great question. And the first thing I'll say is that Tidepool is really committed to interoperability. We see Tidepool Loop as the first truly interoperable, uh, what's known as an automated glycemic controller, or the FDA calls it an IAGC, interoperable automated glycemic controller, which is just a fancy word for an app that can talk to multiple devices. So the FDA laid out uh, requirements for companies to say, if you want to be interoperable, here's what we expect of you. And we did that as part of our submission. So the goal of Tidepool Loop and Tidepool's philosophy is to be interoperable with as many CGMs as possible and as many pumps as possible. So the first cleared CGM that has the designation known as ICGM uh, is the Dexcom G6. Um, and that's what we submitted documentation for. We have a very strong relationship with Dexcom and obviously we're moving towards Dexcom G7 integration. Uh, we've got some work to do and Dexcom's got some work to do as well. But we'd also love to have other CGMs on board as well. Uh, the Abbott, Abbott Freestyle Libre 3, for example, just got ICGM designation. And we would love for uh, the Abbott Libre 3 to also be uh, a device that can work with Tidepool Loop. And we'll keep working towards that. And there'll be other CGMs that come on the market as well. So we're agnostic when it comes to devices. Um, from a pump standpoint, when we originally announced the Tidepool Loop project, we announced that Medtronic and Insulet were partners in developing what's known as an ACE pump. Uh, ACE is the designation that the FDA gives for interoperable insulin pumps. It stands for Alternate Controller Enabled Insulin Infusion Pump. Uh, then a pandemic happened and both Insulet and Medtronic changed their business strategies and let us know that they wouldn't be launch partners with us for Tidepool Loop. Um, the Omnipod 5 did end up getting ACE pump clearance, uh, but it's not an interoperable ACE pump, meaning it's not uh, designated to work with third-party controllers yet. It only works with Insulet's own controller. We'd love to get Insulet back. We'd love to get Medtronic back. What I can tell you is, as with CGMs, we would like to work with multiple pump manufacturers. Um, we have two that we're working with right now, one of which I can tell you about. We actually announced it uh, two weeks ago. Do you want me to dive into that? Uh, yeah, you look surprised. Yeah, I, I did <laughs> not hear about this. I ah. guess I was too busy writing these questions. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, please tell me about that. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, we announced a new relationship with Embecta. Um, and Embecta is uh, a new company that was formed, spun out of the company known as Becton Dickinson. Anybody who's used a syringe knows Becton Dickinson that says BD on the box and BD on the syringe. Wonderful medical device company that has been around for, I believe, 100 years uh, and really been a core part of the diabetes community. So we're thrilled that we now have a relationship with Embecta and they are developing an ACE pump. Uh, their goal is to deliver a version of Loop for the type 2 diabetes community. So we're super excited about that because it really brings uh, the technology that you know in Loop in uh, a much broader and more accessible form. So that's Embecta. I'll Would also that, sorry, sorry to interject. Would no, that only be for type 2, that specific pump, not type 1? That is a great question, and that's going to be, uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done and a lot of interactions that we need to have both with Embecta and the FDA to determine that that's known as uh, labeling and intended use population. And I think that will play out over time. One of the things I need to be very careful about, we're, we're a small, radically transparent company. I love sharing everything. These companies that we partner with are large publicly traded companies and they're very sensitive to uh, us announcing plans and future uh, product details before they're ready to do so. So uh, in terms of timing, availability, intended user population, features, et cetera, uh, that'll all come out over time as we continue our relationship with Embecta. There are two other uh, pump companies that we're working with. One we've been 
uh, working with for quite some time. It's another large uh, company that is very sensitive to their plans being announced. So unfortunately, I can't yet tell you who they are. Um, but I can tell you we have a great relationship with, th with them as well. And uh, they will be, I do believe, they will be launching a version of their pump that will be compatible with Tide Pool Loop. I just can't tell you when that will be because that's up to them to let the world know. Is that a U.S. company? Um, I can't give you any more details ah. about the company than that. Sorry, I can okay. tell you who okay. I can tell you who it isn't. Uh, it, Tandem has said that it is not them. They, uh, Liz okay. Gasser, uh, on a podcast a, a month or two ago, said it's not us. Uh, we do have a super strong relationship with Tandem because they work with our data management platform. But in, tar in terms of who it is, I unfortunately can't give any clues at this point because they're very sensitive to uh, pre-announcing. Yeah, just to go back to what you were saying about Medtronic and Insulate. Now, this may be a difficult question, but since they were so involved with Tidepool Loop, are they legally allowed to take what they've learned about Tidepool and incorporate it into their systems? Wow, that's a really great question. We've made it clear to Medtronic, to Insula, to Tandem, to every company out there, we would welcome them all with open arms, even given their shifting strategy in the past. Like we really pride ourselves in doing the right thing for the diabetes community. We're a nonprofit. Our goal is to make our technology as accessible as it can possibly be. And if they wanted to come back and say, hey, you know what, we've shifted strategy again, and we want to uh, participate and we want our devices to be interoperable with Tide Pool Loop, we would absolutely welcome, welcome that. Now your question, can they take what they learned and use it in their own technology? So we're an open source company, meaning all of the code that we have written, our entire regulatory quality management system, all of the interactions that we have with the FDA, we share all of that openly and publicly. And from our perspective, that's part of our mission. So the answer to your question is yes, they absolutely can take what they have learned because it's already out there. It's already open, it's already public. All of the code for DIY Loop was already public before we got started. And all of the code for Tide Pool Loop is now public and accessible on our GitHub repository. And frankly, we want to encourage that. We want companies to innovate. We want there to be more choice and more solutions for people in the diabetes community. I love your answer there, and I love that that statement by for Tidepool. Um, I mean, in many ways, DIY Loop has paved the way since the early 2000s, pushing pharma to do better and get a closed loop system. And it's possible without DIY Loop that we wouldn't even be there yet. It, who knows? I, I think that's absolutely right. And you know, I, I often say that we're standing on the shoulders of giants, the giants in the diabetes community, the patient-led innovation community that came up with solutions like DIY Loop and Night Scout and Open APS. Like there's so many, and Android APS, there's so many great examples of patient-led innovation. And one of our jobs is to be constantly looking at what's out there and saying, what can we do given our regulatory expertise to make this even more broadly accessible? Let's talk target range. From the sure. research I've done, I think that that's a very unique aspect of Tide Pool Loop. Can you explain to my listeners what is the target range or what is that? what is the ability with target range? Yeah, so first let me define what it is. So target range is what the closed loop automated insulin delivery algorithm uh, tries to achieve. So for a lot of people, a target range might be say 100 to 110 milligrams per deciliter. I'll speak in US units, but it also works in millimoles per liter for your, uh, 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 for your listeners that work in those units. Um, so the target range is what the glucose prediction and automated insulin delivery algorithm tries to bring your glucose to by delivering automated insulin. It makes a decision every five minutes. Now, Tide Pool Loop has a configurable target range, and that range is as low as 87 milligrams per deciliter and as high as 180 milligrams per deciliter. And my understanding is that right now that is the widest configurable range of target range of any automated uh, 
insulin delivery system. We think that's super important. We think people living with diabetes should be in control. There are very good reasons, for example, if you're newly diagnosed and you're trying to slowly bring down your target, you don't wanna to go too fast because that can create um, uh, issues with the eyes, for example. And so you might wanna start your target range in the 170 or 160s and then with your healthcare provider, slowly bring it down. Um, and then there are people who feel very confident in their diabetes management strategy and might want a lower target range. And so, for example, you know, a range of 90 to 100 or 87 to 100. Um, and so that's all possible with Tide Pool Loop. And the data we submitted to the FDA as part of our submission uh, supported that target range. How wide can a range be? And is that fully customizable? It is fully customizable anywhere between 87 and 180 in one milligram per deciliter increments. That's that's so cool. And and that kind of gets into where I was going next with which is like flexibility with settings. So what I love about DIY is how easily I can change settings. Let's kind of get into like the temp override. So with mine, I have limitless abilities and my guess is that with Tide Pool Loop you won't have as much flexibility with changing ranges and basal rates with temp overrides. Can you explain to me like what's available for like when people are doing certain activities or when they're drinking alcohol and they feel like they need to change their ranges and even basal rates temporarily? Yeah, uh, so temp overrides are a feature that is uh, very popular and well-loved in the, the DIY community. Before I answer that, let me um, clarify something that I said earlier. Uh, a prescription is required to get started with Tide Pool Loop, but once you have the prescription and your initial set of settings, you as a person living with diabetes have the control to go in and change your settings at any time. You don't have to go back to your healthcare provider and say, hey, can you change my settings for me? You as a person living with diabetes can actually go into the settings within Loop and make those changes yourself. So I just wanted to make that clear in case there was any, uh, any question about that. Uh, the temp overrides feature that's in DIY loop didn't actually exist in the version of DIY loop that was in the clinical study known as the loop observational study that happened uh, late 2019 to early 2020. So that clinical study uh, was the basis for all of the data that we submitted to the FDA. So unfortunately, you know, Override was just starting to become available during that period of time, but most of the people in the study were not able to use Overrides. And so there wasn't enough clinical data for us to say, hey, that feature is gonna be part of Tide Pool Loop. Now, of course, that's a feature that we know and we love. I didn't say this earlier, but my daughter, uh, Katie, was also a very active uh, looper and loved overrides as well. And lots of people that work at Tidepool are also active DIY loopers. So we know the feature very, very well. What I can tell you is that will be a follow-up submission for us with the FDA. We're actively working on that right now. Uh, we're actually doing human factor studies to generate the data to demonstrate that it is safe and effective. So I can commit that there will be a version of overrides that will be in Tide Pool Loop. And uh, by the time Tide Pool Loop is actually in the App Store, uh, depending on where we're, we are with the FDA, hopefully it will be there um, right along with all of the other functionality in Tide Pool Loop. With those clinical studies, I know you used, uh, in, in fact, the FDA it encouraged data from DIY loopers. Now, were they using the Tide Pool Loop app for this study? And my guess is, were they using like the Dexcom G6 with Omnipod Dash, which is like now a, you're able to with the DIY loop? They were not using Tide Pool Loop during the loop observational study. So that's one of the really unique things about our submission. The FDA is really uh, embracing real world evidence to support uh, clearance and approval of devices and therapeutics, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing from our perspective. So the FDA should get a lot of credit. They suggested that we submit the 
real world evidence from the observational study. So it's a little different because it was an observational study. It's different than what most medical device companies do, which is known as an interventional study. So we were gathering data from people that had already decided on their own to use DIY loop, as opposed to where most medical device companies will recruit people for their studies and then provide an intervention. And they often do a randomized control study where you have a control group that doesn't get the intervention and a different group that does get the intervention. So the observational study was not like that. So it was people using DIY loop who had already decided on their own to use DIY loop. I just have to say that's incredible. I mean, that's just a testament to this we are not waiting movement around for so many years now, but they infiltrated the FDA system. Like that is that is huge, right? Like DIY loop being used in real data with the FDA through Tidepool loop. Like I just think that's an so incredible and an incredible story. And something I also kind of get into, well, I get into DIY Loop with Pete Schwamm's interview on the origins of Loop, but it's just, it's such an incredible community. And I, I commend you and your company as well for just being a part of it. One thing that stands out it, it, to me with my system, and I know Tidepool Loop has it as well, is the Tagalong Watch app on the Apple Watch. Can you tell me a little bit about how you can use an Apple Watch with Tidepool Loop's iPhone app? Absolutely. So first, just to pile on to everything that you just said, Tidepool Loop would not have happened without the DIY looping community. Huge shout out to everybody who participated in the observational study. Uh, huge shout out to the participants in the looped Facebook group. Uh, there were over 850 people in the study who submitted at least six months, if not a year worth of data. It is the most data that has ever been submitted for a system of this kind by a factor of three. It's incredible. And so we couldn't have done it. And, and a special, you know, sad shout out to Katie D. Simone, who uh, really led that effort. Unfortunately, she died of brain cancer a couple of months ago, and uh, she was really pivotal to making all of that happen and to working with the community. So uh, to answer your question, Apple Watch uh, control is, I believe, one of the most revolutionary things about the Loop app. Uh, being able to manage your diabetes from your wrist, to be able to discreetly control uh, your boluses, to enter into exercise mode, to enter into pre-meal mode, like to me, that is just incredible. And I know it was a huge win for my daughter. It was a huge win for everyone in the observational study who used an Apple Watch. And so that is absolutely part of Tidepool Loop. And what I've heard people say is that that use DIY Loop along with their Apple Watch is they can do most of what they need to do over the course of the day just from their watch. And you can just leave your phone in your pocket and you're sitting there having lunch and you look at your wrist, you uh, do a few taps and away you go. Amazing. Just to go back on something you said, Katie D. Simone, she also played a pivotal role in my research. I spoke mm -hmm. to her on the phone and she gave me a whole background and just, I could hear her passion for the community through her words and like huge shout out to her and um, yeah. like, she's just done so much for the community and she deserves all of the recognition. I, I even was talking to her. I was like, this, this story deserves a freaking movie. I, I, or totally a, uh, HBO, well, a, a max series, like a six episode series. You know, if anyone listening is working in Hollywood, talk to me. I would love to help you produce that. Today's episode is sponsored by T1D Exchange. You can directly make an impact on diabetes healthcare, treatments, and technology by participating in the T1D Exchange registry. It starts with a simple survey about your life with T1D, and it only takes about 15 minutes. After that, you'll have a personal portal with ongoing T1D study and survey opportunities. Plus, some of these studies even offer compensation. Signing up with the link in the show notes helps support my channel and it allows me to continue putting out free content. You can sign up at t1dexchange.org slash diabetic or click that link in today's show notes. There were some questions I still had 
with the study, and that was with time and range with the FDA study. How did the time and range compare to systems that are on the market now? Yeah, so uh, time and range is a really interesting statistic. So the first thing I will say is it's comparable. Um, and I won't try to quote the numbers with precision off the top of my head, but uh, I can absolutely share that data with you. But pretty much all systems are now achieving time and range in the 70-ish percent range. And uh, Tide Pool Loop was no exception. And one thing I always like to remind people is that any system that makes an adjustment every five minutes is gonna do great. And so uh, there will be slow and steady improvements in time and range, and some systems are getting you know low 70s and some systems are getting mid 70s. Um, the dramatic differences in time and range are gonna come when we have faster insulins, because one of the real challenges for these systems is that current I'll put air quotes, rapid acting insulin is actually not actually that rapid acting. It peaks after 45 minutes and then can have up to a six hour tail. Imagine an insulin that peaked very quickly and then dropped off very quickly. A system based on that kind of insulin could be much more precise in its insulin delivery and not have to worry about the variability of onset and offset of insulin. Uh, Bihormonal systems are also gonna do a better job. So when you can have insulin bringing blood sugar down, but also glucagon bringing blood sugar up, then you can be a little bit more aggressive in your insulin delivery and get greater time and range. But what I will say about time and range is uh, Tide Pool Loop's time and range is, uh, or at least DIY Loop's time and range based on the data in the observational study is uh, comparable to all of the other systems. Improvements will keep happening in algorithms, but what we really need is faster insulins in order to to do better. So let's talk about meal bolusing. First, let's start with pre-meal. One of the things I love most about Loop, DIY Loop, is the fact that I can click this little thing on my watch or my phone, it's called pre-meal. It sets my range lower, I believe to 80 to 90. Does that exist on Tide Pool Loop? And is it the same range? Yeah, premium uh, mode does exist in uh, in Tide Pool Loop. It's actually configurable, and I believe it's configurable in DIY Loop uh, as well. So you can set that to whatever works for you, and it's configurable in Tide Pool Loop as well. And uh, that feature definitely carries on. And as we do additional work on uh, custom overrides, I think we'll be able to provide some more functionality that's like premium mode. Okay, great. And I, I don't think I fully explained what pre-meal is to people who are listening. Basically what I do is I, I tap that about maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes before I eat when I'm maybe walking over to get some food and that just starts bringing my levels lower. That way it kind of like curbs any highs that I could get, which is just such a fantastic feature. Now- Yeah, it gets a little it, insulin into your system because if that insulin's not gonna peak for 45 minutes, but you just got your food, you need to you need to match that up a little. And so pre-meal mode brings the insulin in just a little sooner. Yeah, I, I would love to see that. Fe I mean, there's so many features I'd love to see on other systems, but that that's such a great one. It's such a, like, it's such a great, <laughs> such a great idea. Now, as of now, DIY loops only available on iPhone. There are other systems like AAPS, which is for Android phones, and maybe some ev even some other ones that I don't know about. For, but for Tide Pool Loop, from what I understand, it's currently only on iPhone and Apple Watch. Do you have plans to bring that to Android and even Android watches? I am so glad you asked that because that's another announcement that we made a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we're very, very pleased to announce that a very generous anonymous donor has given us a grant to port Tide Pool Loop to Android. So we have now begun the planning and development effort uh, to bring what is known today as Tide Pool Loop uh, to Android devices. As far as the details of what phones it'll be, will it be on Android watches? We've still got a lot of work to do. This just happened within the last month, but we now have funding to make it happen. So we're really excited about that. Android, as you know, is actually the most popular uh, mobile platform in the world. Uh, it's 70-ish percent worldwide. 
iOS is a little more popular in the US. And so, um, but uh, Android is actually much more prevalent uh, for people on public assistance insurance. So the most uh, uh, people who are most in need of this kind of technology, the most vulnerable populations, we would love as part of our mission as a nonprofit to make our technology broadly accessible as possible. And bringing Typo Loop to Android is one way that we can do that. So we're really, really excited about that project. That's amazing. I mean, accessibility is so, so important. It's part of the reason why I do what I do is because I saw a need for education and information because people don't have access to endocrinologists and diabetes educators or even lifestyle coaches that you pay for. And I, I just, I was like, you know what, I'm going to use my resources, take, learn as much as I can from my educators and then just make a TikTok video. Now, I apologize to people who are listening and to you for like going back and forth. I just like, I keep getting excited about things you say and I'm like, wait, I didn't ask that question. No but problem. Back to, back to meal logging. Tell me about what's different with logging meals for Tide Pool Loop. Like, are the emojis back? Tell me about that process. Yeah, one of the features that all of us who used DIY Loop or had kids using DIY Loop loved is the way meals get uh, entered into the Loop system. And that system carries forward from DIY Loop to Tide Pool Loop. So in short, when you enter a meal into Loop, uh, you can use an emoji icon to indicate uh, the glycemic index or the absorption carb absorption time of that meal. And the default icons are lollipop, taco, and pizza. So lollipop uh, indicates fast acting carbs uh, and the default time is 30 minutes for that. Taco indicates kind of average meals and the default carb absorption time is three hours. And then pizza indicates those really, you know, tricky, high fat, high protein meals like pizza or grandma's lasagna that really take a long time to get into the system and take a long time to get out. And the default carb absorption time for those is six hours. And so in loop, that replaces what the, in my opinion, old school way of entering carbs that a lot of insulin pumps had, which was doing uh, dual wave boluses or extended boluses. So a lot of people over the years came up with really elaborate strategies for, you know, doing some insulin up front and then doing a second wave of insulin that stretch over three or four or five hours. And it was just a really tricky way to manage meals. So you'd eat a few slices of pizza and go, oh, what do I do? So all you do now is you enter the carbs, you say, okay, 50 grams of carbs, tap the pizza icon, and Loop comes up with the appropriate bolus for you and manages the insulin delivery over that whole time. Yeah, I found that feature to be really helpful for me and it takes a lot of the thinking out of extended boluses. Exactly. With, with that glycemic index programming, with the emojis, mm -hmm. with the hours it takes for it to absorb, how does that affect the algorithm when you change those emojis or those you know those custom that customization and do you have fda cleared systems or other systems on the market like t-slim omnipod 5 do you have them beat when it comes to that like do you are you accessing more information that like allows for better control than they can uh, I don't know that I can compare, I don't, I don't think I can answer the question, do we have them beat? Like okay. the other systems are great systems with great algorithms. The T-Slim is actually rooted in an algorithm developed at the University of Virginia, which was ultimately spun out and acquired by Dexcom uh, through a company known as Type Zero, and then licensed to Tandem for use in their products. And the UVA team did amazing work and it's a wonderful algorithm. What I can do is I can describe how it works in the algorithm in Tide Pool Loop. And there's a great white paper, by the way, for your listeners who really want to dive deep, they can go to tidepool.org slash documents and read the white paper that describes how the algorithm works that we uh, submitted to the FDA. So here's the short form of it. Food 
gets absorbed by your body and I'm kind of using my hand to, to show the curve of absorption. So it makes your blood sugar go up and then as your body absorbs it, over time uh, the glucose is absorbed. And that time that it takes is what most people call the glycemic index. So rapid acting carbs get absorbed quickly and then they get absorbed, uh, uh, taken up by the body through in with insulin acting as the key. Now, insulin also has an absorption curve. And so we were talking earlier about rapid acting insulins that peak at about 45 minutes and then trail off over about six hours. So what the tide pool loop algorithm does is it looks at both of those curves. It looks at the uh, insulin absorption curve. It looks at the carbohydrate absorption curve. It also looks at your glucose and what the trend of that glucose is. It then does math and makes a prediction based on bringing all of that information together. It predicts what do I think is going to happen to your glucose over time. And then it adjusts the insulin delivery and does the math again and says, what do I think will happen if I give this much insulin? And it does all that math every five minutes, including going back and saying, how did the last prediction that I made work out? Is your body absorbing the carbohydrates faster than I thought or slower than I thought? Is your glucose rising faster than I thought or slower than I thought? And so it takes all of that information, including error correcting based on what it saw happen and then feeds that into the next iteration of the algorithm. So that's probably the best I can do to summarize what is a 20 or 30 page white paper and a bunch of really amazing math and code, but it works and it works really well. Yeah, no, that, that was a great explanation. I think that's also just gonna be helpful for a lot of people, mm -hmm. irregardless of this app, just having that knowledge of glycemic index. It's, I find that it's something that a lot of people kind of miss. And it's something that I try to talk about as often as possible because it, it, it is so important. People see it, they just don't know the name for it, the term for it, and kind of how to differentiate between some foods. So that's a fantastic feature. Real quick, are there other emojis? Like on my system, I can tap like this little icon and it gives me a bunch of emojis. Do you yeah. have access to that? It kind of helps me. Absolutely. Um, okay. That feature is still there. Mo I would say most people don't use that, but you, if you want to use different emojis than lollipop, taco, and pizza, you can. And then okay. you can assign uh, custom uh, carb absorption times to those emojis. Okay. Let's get into rollout. So when Tidepool Loop does become available, how, yeah, it's an application on a phone, but how will it be tied to a pump? Does that make sense? Like with insurance, how does that kind of look? Yeah, so, so Tidepool Loop will be an app in the App Store. Uh, I think your question may be, will I have to pay for the app or will it be bundled with the uh, pump or the CGM? And that's a detail that we're still working out with our pump partners. And I think it may vary by pump partners. Our goal as a nonprofit is to have it be as accessible as possible. If money were no object, we would obviously want it to be free because that's the best way to get it out there. Um, we hope we don't have to charge for it, uh, but obviously we've got a small team and we need to pay their salaries. But whatever we do, we're going to try to make it as reasonably uh, accessible as we possibly can. Um, whether it will be reimbursed by insurance or it'll be bundled with the pump, that's still an evolving landscape. Um, the pump makers that get insurance reimbursement right now, like Medtronic and Tandem and Insulet, actually haven't so far been able to get additional insurance reimbursement uh, from the big insurance companies. So what the insurance companies are willing to pay for those pumps really hasn't changed much, even though those pumps have gotten much better with the addition of automated insulin delivery. So I think that's going to be an interesting dynamic. Uh, I won't claim to be an expert on insurance reimbursement. Uh, and the way it works in the US is uh, very strange and bizarre to people in the rest of the world. Uh, I'll even say broken. And so hopefully that will change over time because clearly automated insulin delivery is a great advancement in both uh, improved outcomes, but also reduction in burden for people living with diabetes. Yeah, I think that is a great segue to my next question, which is why is Tide Pool Loop important to you? 
and the community. Oh, uh, that, uh, that's so easy for me to answer that question. My daughter, Katie, lives with type 1 diabetes. She was diagnosed in 2011. I knew nothing about diabetes when she was diagnosed. I didn't know what insulin was. I didn't know there was a difference between type 1 and type 2. But what I did know and what I could see right away was how challenging of a disease it is and how burdensome it is. And, you know, if I could take it away from Katie and trade places with her, I would do that in a heartbeat. But back in 2011, the the pump she was prescribed looked like the pager that I wore in the 90s. And the CGM that was prescribed was painful and it was inaccurate. And I just couldn't fathom why all this technology was so bad. And, you know, being a geek dad and, you know, I, my, my background is in consumer electronics and software. So I knew it could be better. And I, all I really wanted as a dad was for things to be better for my daughter. So f to answer your question, Tide Pool Loop is important to me because I want the best possible technology, the best possible software, the best possible devices for my daughter. And I know she's not alone. There's one and a half million people in the U.S. living with type one. There's 30 million people living with type two in the U.S. There's, you know, hundreds of millions of people with diabetes living around the world. And it's very clear to me that we can do better. We must do better. And so it's really important for me uh, just personally, not just to help my daughter live a less burdensome life uh, living with diabetes, but also uh, for all of the solutions that are available to her to be as widely available as possible. Yeah, I mean, that's why it was so important for me to have you on the show to talk about this. It's just incredible how so many people like you and other people in the, in the community have been impacted by a family member, a friend, mm -hmm. and then used their skills and inspiration to create something that could help everyone. It, that's, yeah. ins that's inspiring. It's I love this community here. so much. It's the, the We Are Not Waiting community, the patient-led innovation community. And I will give lots of credit to, you know, companies like Dexcom and Insulet and Medtronic that are, are pouring, you know, tens if not hundreds of millions of uh, investment dollars into making better devices as well. And so, yeah, the, the, the parent and patient-led community that has stepped up and said, hey, we're just going to do better and share it all. We're going to pay it forward and share everything we've learned and everything we've done. Like to me, it is just it's energizing, it's inspiring, and it, it gets me to spring out of bed every morning. Yeah. And I also want to make sure I do give credit to those companies as well. Like I went to Omnipod's factory, I went to the research and development, and I met people that have been there for 20 years. And yeah. the passion, they want to help people like Money aside, there are good people in these companies that really are working hard to help people. And the same with, uh, I just spoke to Eilet's CEO who lives with mm -hmm. type 1 diabetes. He's, saying, yeah. yeah, he's working on a product because he wants to help people. Totally. So it's, it's, it's amazing. I want to give that same credit to the people at the FDA. I think it's sometimes sporting to point fingers at the FDA and say that's why they're slowing things down. Um, that wasn't our experience at all. Our experience working with the FDA was it is a bunch of dedicated, really passionate people that really deeply care about safety and public health. And uh, I do think that the FDA is working very hard to update regulations that they did not create, like Congress created some of the regulations that kind of made sense before there was an internet, but make no sense in modern times. And so really the people at the FDA are working very hard to move as quickly as they can. They see the pace of innovation happening in the DIY community, in the patient-led innovation community. And they know that our ability as industry, as a regulated industry to iterate and get those solutions to the community as fast as possible is good for public health. And they are working to try to make that happen. So I wanna give them a lot of credit too. Howard, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was so awesome. Thanks, Justin. It's always great talking to you. Thanks for having me on. Of course. I hope today's episode excites you as much as it excites me. The DIY space is incredible and I'm eager to see the power of DIY Loop 
finally becoming accessible to the masses. Have you used DIY Loop? Let us know what you think in the YouTube comments. Also check out my videos if you haven't seen them already. How do you think that DIY Loop compares to our FDA cleared systems? Let us know. If you haven't already, be sure to watch all of my latest videos from ATTD on YouTube. I interviewed Abbott, Dexcom, Medtronic. There's a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel. And for exclusive videos, input on future content and direct messaging with me, check out our Patreon. There's a link to it in the description. Episodes of this podcast release every Monday, wherever you listen and on YouTube. There are links to my YouTube channel and social accounts in today's show notes. I'm Justin and I'll take you next week.